Hey, what's up, classic cartoon fans? My name is Rick 9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about the Merry Melodies short, Tweety Pie. Now, I want to give you more information about it before I start and we look at the summary of the episode. It's a 1947 release, and it's the first Tweety Sylvester cartoon there ever was. That is the individuals coming together as a duo cartoon. The director was Fritz Frilling, and of course, Tweety Pie is a play off of the phrase Sweetie Pie. Tweety's creator, Bob Clampett, left Warner Brothers in 1945. He was working on a film, and this one would have been the first with Sylvester and Tweety, Fat Rat and the Stupid Cat. But unfortunately, it never entered full production as his unit was given to someone else. Now, when Fritz Freling at the same time was working on a follow-up to his second Sylvester cartoon, featuring Sylvester in pursuit of a witty woodpecker, Freling wanted to replace the woodpecker with Tweety. However, the producer objected and Freling threatened to quit. Now, Seltzer allowed Tweety to be used in the film and resulted in Warner Brothers to win their first Oscar, which Seltzer accepted. After Seltzer passed away in 1970, the Oscar was passed on to Freling. Now this cartoon would go on to become a huge success, and as a result, Tweety would always be paired with Sylvester from that point on in other appearances because the duo carried a high amount of star power. Now Sylvester would appear in many shorts without Tweety as well, yet this was not the case for Tweety as he was always paired with Sylvester. So not only is this Tweety Pie 1947 short an Academy Award or Oscar winner, it is also the first with Sylvester and Tweety. So let's take a look at it. In this episode, we see that Sylvester is not called Sylvester, but Thomas, and his voice was made by Mel Blanc, as well as Tweety, that's Mel Blanc as well. And B. Benadere plays the woman, or the human in this case, and she later does portray Granny as well, and June Ferre also came in to play that role when that character was created. So the short begins outside on a wintry day. Now it looks very cold, and you can see a tiny little Tweety Bird amongst all the snow, keeping warm outside. Now what's really cool is just the ingenuity to some of these cartoons. Think about it, a little Tweety Bird, how would he keep warm? He wouldn't build a fire. There was a, a piece of a cigar that was lit, and he was using it as kind of like a little campfire to keep warm. I think little things like that are, are just pretty great. They're genius stuff, like little details that go a long way to just make the story more engaging. Now, the snowman itself that you saw the entire time is Sylvester the cat. Well, at least he's inside. Now remember, Sylvester is known as Thomas several times by the woman. I will call her the woman, the adult. She's never given a name. The woman, the adult, the human. She's basically the owner of the home from what we can assume. And her cat is Thomas the cat. And then Tweety's kind of outside. Now Thomas uses these tennis rackets. He just pulls them out of nowhere as snowshoes. I like that because tennis rackets always look like snowshoes, um, right? They help to walk very slowly and stealthily to the Tweety Bird so it can grab them to eat. That's this whole short. I'm going to call it a short in this cartoon. It's basically um, Thomas wanting to eat Tweety and Tweety outsmarting him or the woman, basically, the human being, the owner, uh, basically protecting Tweety. Now, this is where we hear the famous, I taught, I taught, putty tat, right? I taught, I taught, putty tat. And it's great because we hear this line from Tweety. He breaks the fourth wall by looking at the camera, which I absolutely love, that was used in TV shows as well. But in 1947, I think that is pretty awesome. Now, of course, Thomas is trying to catch Tweety, and he catches the cigar instead. I love it. It's a little like a sleight of hand thing. Remember, it's like a Roadrunner or a Roadrunner Wiley e. Coyote type thing. Like Tweety can never get um, caught, right? It's always like something that always eludes us. Now the human woman catches Thomas trying to get or eat Tweety, and she asks the cat to kiss him because he's a poor homeless little bird. Now when she says for him to do that, he doesn't even care that she's there. He bites Tweety, just puts him in his entire mouth, just goes um and doesn't swallow, almost swallows, but she slaps him out. She slaps Tweety out, protects him. And it's really funny because two or three times Tweety sings, I love little putty tat. 
Inside his mouth is so warm, but if I don't bother him, he'll do me no harm. And there's this little rhyme. It's just, it's just a silly little thing. Kids love it. But again, it's just tongue in cheek. It's just a very uh, like quirky, very smart written episode that is fairly short. Now, she, the human, puts Tweety in a cage and asks Thomas to be good. Of course he's not going to be good. So the cat or Thomas builds a pile of furniture to try to reach up to Tweety. There's all these segments where he's like coming up with a plan, a crafty plan. Now the Tweety happens not to be in his cage when he makes it all the way up. He's actually sawing the legs on the bottom of the furniture pile. Now when I first saw this, I thought it was super hilarious, right? It's the Tweety outsmarting the quote unquote smarter Thomas cat, right? Now again, mention the Roadrunner and the Coyote dynamic. It's great and it's always funny and it just works. Now Thomas quickly puts the furniture back to appear innocent when he hears that his owner the woman comes downstairs and she hits him with a broom punishing him for trying to get Tweety. Now Thomas isn't about to give up. This is his second try and he tries something different. So he piles up more furniture but now it's metal and he clanks on it to show hey you can't saw it this time. So he goes all the way up climbs up the pile of furniture and what happens? Tweety's already down there with a blowtorch cutting the legs off of the chairs, um, which is great. It's, it's like a one-up, right? Like the um, the three little pigs and the homes, right? It's, it's like he's always outsmarting him. Thomas continues his nefarious plans by using a fan and he straps it to himself to fly up there. He lifts himself up into the air, but Tweety's gone. He's not in his cage. Where is he? Well, he's out there and he unplugs the fan and Thomas is so nervous because if that fan stops, he'll drop. And he did and hits the ground really, really hard. He slams on the ground and he says, oh, poor putty tan. He's without a parachute. <laughs> Just the way he said, I can't really do it well, but. The way he says things is just perfect. Now, again, Thomas thinks of another idea, lifts himself up with a fishing line. Of course, that doesn't go as planned. He screams for help and he goes back to the floor pretending to go to sleep. Now, he finally does capture Tweety in a clear cup while he's inside the cage and he can't be heard. It seems like this is going to be the end for Tweety. All of a sudden, he pulls a pin out and you know what he's thinking. He's going to poke his hand and he stabs him and of course Thomas shouts up to the sky his whole body basically shoots into the sky in pain and Tweety starts to blow the horn he starts to blow the horn warning the human woman her owner or the owner uh, that hey this cat is out, out to get me so she comes back and snip, smacks Thomas again and kicks him out now he schemes one last time outdoors because she kicks him out of the house he comes through the chimney, and of course, what does Tweety do? He builds a fire. So before, well, second to last, he builds a contraption. Now this contraption is to lure Tweety, basically to render him useless by getting a bowling ball to drop on him. He builds his Rube Goldberg machine of all these little things that connect and something hits this and a ball rolls and everything. But in fact, the bowling ball hits Thomas the cat right in the head. He tries to cut a hole in the roof and the whole roof caves in. The little section with Tweety stays up and I love things like that. The physics of Looney Tunes cartoons are simply the best. So he breaks the broom that is Thomas so he doesn't get hit with it anymore. But Tweety gets a shovel and starts to smack Thomas with it. Now I always think what happened to the woman at this point? The cartoon abruptly ends. It's almost like Tweety got the upper hand and I guess we're supposed to suspect Tweety won over Thomas and now Thomas is afraid of him? I don't know, that's leaving it up to conclusion. But it's the idea of, right, David and Goliath, always the big trying to get the small, but the small one's out in the end. I wanna know your thoughts. What do you think about this cartoon? Have you seen it? Is it one that you really, really like? What do you think about the morality in this one? And what are your favorite funny moments from it? I'd love to see it in the comments down below. Let me know if you'd like to see another. If people have enough recommendations and I have it, I will totally cover that one for you in the next video. Thanks so much, and as always, be hopeful.